All right, I have to talk about this game. You don't have to listen, you don't have to care, but I have to talk about it. So a couple hours ago, Final Fantasy 16 gameplay, uncut gameplay just dropped. And for those of you who don't know, uh, in case some, in case this is the first time you're ever seeing anything from me, uh, I, I, I might be a fan of Final Fantasy. I just might, you know. I, I only mention that I love this series more than anything, uh, every chance I get. The, this series means the most to me. It is my favorite series ever. It has some of my favorite games ever. Um, so th this is my most anticipated game. This and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So uh, I have to just say that when I read those leaks that gameplay was dropping today, y you can't imagine how excited I was. And <clears throat> now that I have seen this gameplay, I have to say some things definitely were different than I expected. Uh, but there are some things I didn't like, some things I did, but I have to talk about some stuff. I just have to talk. So, let's talk about, like, what I can say I really like so far. The story set up, uh, I saw Skill Up's video. It's all very cool. There's not much to go on there. It's all been covered before uh, and other things, like, months ago, but it looks really good. Visuals, to anyone saying this game looks like a PS3 game, I would encourage you to... Uh, click the link I have in the description which has the full demo. It's in Japanese though, but it has the full demo uh, Start to finish and it is very visually impressive the lighting on some of the walls and stuff Very very good the game looks great And I also want to say I don't think this is ever gonna be on Xbox man because they said this game was on PS5 because the combat relies on the memory speed of the PS5 something that the PS I mean that's something that the Xbox just straight up does not have they said similar things about uh, FF7 Rebirth so far from a little bit they've talked about with that. They've said that that game is made possible with the PS5 and I guess technically PC as well. So uh, these games I don't expect to ever come to Xbox, man, but that's fine with me because I have the console for it. Okay, now let's get into the stuff I really want to talk about. This combat looks so good. Uh, if I had to compare it to something, it seems like a hybrid between Dragon's Dogma uh, Devil May Cry and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Now, keep in mind, there's nothing turn-based like FF7 Remake, but let me explain my point. So, FF7 Remake's combat has a very low floor, but a very high skill ceiling. Uh, basic FF7 Remake combat looks, you know, like your typical, you know, hack and slash game, but when you start to get good at FF7 Remake, like, it, it really starts to look really good. Some of the, in the footage I have here, I'm fighting Sephiroth on hard mode. Uh, it, it starts to look really good when you get the counters going, you get all the team uh, stuff going. It, it, the game looks great. It has a very low floor, but this the skill ceiling for 7 Remake is very high, and I get the same feeling with Final Fantasy 16. It looks so good. The combat looks great, although there are some things I don't like uh, in mini bosses and bosses. There are QTEs. Now, I am not as big of a hater of QTEs as some are. Uh, I think when done correctly, QTEs can be very good. God of War, the new God of War games do QTEs very well. But uh, these, I think, are too long. Like, it's it's too jarring, right? Uh, you have to do QTEs in a way that aren't jarring, or isn't jarring, however that grammar would work. But uh, th this game's QTEs are jarring. They're noticeable, right? I like When I would see the QTEs, I'd be like, ugh. Like, it, I definitely did wince at it, right? Uh... I would prefer if they were just shorter or if they were just not jarring. I hope they'll listen to feedback on that because I'm assuming that's what this is for. Like, you know how Team Ninja will like put out trial versions of their game way ahead and then uh, adjust as time goes on due to the feedback on that? I'm assuming that's kind of what this is. The QTEs were, were very jarring, right? I was like, uh, come on, integrate that a little bit better because like the screen freezes and there's a certain lighting and then the button prop comes up with a, with a wheel saying how long you have to do it. Just, just integrate it more seamlessly, I guess. Uh, it's not a huge nitpick, I guess. Like, it wouldn't detract from anything. But it was definitely like, okay, come on. Just just, just let it be a bit more seamless. But the combat looks great. This game has air combat. Oh, my God. The fact that I have to scream that this game has actual air combat. Because so many games these days just take away your jump button. God of War took away your jump button. 7 Remake took away the jump button, but it still had air combat. Because it was just, you know, you press square on aerial enemy and you just zip up to them. I'm assuming 7 Rebirth will bring back the jump button for its, if it's open world for that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah. So, so many games just take that from you. And 16 
does it. 16 gives you the jump button. And the fact that I'm screaming about a jump button is insane. <laughs> like, the game just uh, just looks so much fun. Uh, the stagger system from this is very... Uh, I would say it's very 7 remake but it's not. 7 Remake is like you build it up over time, whereas the stagger system in this is like... You have to build it up quickly. This reminds me a lot of Lightning Returns. Uh, that stagger system, if you are familiar... You had to like you had to hit an enemy's weakness X amount of times to pop that stagger gauge, and when you did, you could do a lot of bonus damage, and that's kind of what this is. Something else I will touch on, I I like the health bars and everything like that. I think the amount of information presented on screen is good. I hate the damage numbers. I hope to God there is a setting to remove that. I hate these damage numbers. Like they're so big, they're taking up the entire screen. I can't even see what's happening. Right? I, I hate these damage numbers. I want them gone i want a setting to remove them thank you very much seven remake has damage numbers but they're not intrusive like you as you can see in the footage like right here when Aerith is shooting at sephiroth yeah there's damage numbers but they're not intrusive right they're just little white numbers that pop up to say you know what it is it tells you exactly the amount of information you need and 16 they're big glowing lemonade stand letters and numbers that just take up the entire screen whenever they're up there i don't like that i really hope they change that or they give us an option to remove that because i hate the look of that it looks terrible right and it makes the game look bad uh that's just that's just a little bit of a little nitpick on me though again i, I think this game looks great i want to specify but i do not like the qtes i hope they're integrated more seamlessly because qtes when integrated well are good uh and i hate the damage numbers i want them gone so i know a lot of people are mad that this game is only one playable character that being clive rossfeld um this doesn't bother me that bad, you know, because I would rather have one really well fleshed out character than like four or five kind of eh characters. Otherwise, like as much as I love Final Fantasy 15, you get a 50, you get an FF 15 situation where like, yeah, every character feels good, but like none of them feel like they had a ton of time put into them. Now, Seven Remake is the difference because Seven Remake. While it is an action game, it's still very classic Final Fantasy. Everybody has their roles, and, and you can make a more refined combat system around them because they all have their roles. You know, Barrett and Aerith, they, they stay at the distance, so there's not really a lot to do there. You just have to make them shoot. Uh, Cloud, he gets up close and personal with counters and everything, and Tifa builds stagger, so it's, it's just... Yeah, there's a lot of characters in 7 Remake, but it's easier to make them all look good because they all have their specific roles that you designed them around, whereas... Uh, with Clive, I mean, like they're just making him a jack of all trades, and it looks really good. Uh, I really like the icon switching; it's like weapon switching in Devil May Cry. Looks great. Uh, I will say, from what I've seen, like it seems like you can kind of do what you do with like the God of War games, the new God of War games, like further into it when you get like high cooldown builds, where you can just kind of spam runic attacks when they come off cooldown. It seems like you can kind of do that in 16, maybe not, maybe they'll adjust it, uh, but. I will say that basic attacks don't seem like that integral, but they, they still seem good. Like It still definitely looks really good. Again, I've not played it myself, so I can't say, but I'm just going off of what I've seen in the footage. It looks really good, though. Uh, I really, really like, like the way the combat flows. Again, it seems like it has a very low floor. Anybody can pick this up. There's accessories to even help people who aren't good at action games, but uh, it has a very high skill ceiling, kind of like Dragon's Dog with Devil May Cry. Now, I know they said that, if I'm if I am interpreting what they said correctly, uh, Yoshi P has essentially said, there is no easy mode for 16. There is one difficulty at the beginning, uh, and there are accessories to make it easier for those that aren't good at action games. For example, there's one that makes you just kind of auto-dodge things, or like, uh, increases the window to dodge things for people who just aren't good. And I'm assuming this is because, you know, a lot of Final Fantasy fans, they haven't played anything past FF10, like, because they just don't like anything action-related. Which is fine, but it really bothers me when people pretend that every action game is just a mindless hack and slash. Like, bro, like people who wrote off 7 Remake as a hack and slash, like, listen, I want you to go in 7 Remake and only press square. Tell me how far you get. Uh, let me know when you beat Guard Scorpion by only pressing square. I'll wait for you. But, again, uh, that, that's what that's for, and that, that's pretty good, right? They said that there's a harder difficulty that unlocks when you beat the game. They said it's very hard, so I'm assuming there'll be a hard difficulty from the jump. From what I've seen and heard, uh, 16 is very easy, or is relatively easy, so I will probably just choose hard mode from the jump, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I'm a masochist, who knows, but it just, 
I want challenge. I want this game to punish me, right? I was about to say something I shouldn't have. Hold on. Let, me, let me not get into that, but... Uh, the game just looks so good, man. I'm so excited for it. The icon battles, I need to talk about these. Now, there's a couple kinds of these. There is human versus human, human versus partially transformed human, and then human versus icon, icon versus icon. So, the human versus, like, partially transformed human, like when Bendit, when, uh, Bendit Ditka turns into, like, a, like, partially transforms into Garuda. Really cool fight. Uh, just your typical, like, really cool... Uh, fantasy fight, I really like that. And then there is Clive versus Garuda. Uh, this is really dope looking. It's, and it, it's not one of those, you know, the one of those I'm talking about. It's not, it doesn't turn into one of those. Uh, for, <laughs> to be clear, the one of those, I guess, would be uh, like when you're on a platform and the giant monster puts its hand down so you can hit it. Like, it's, it's not one of those. It's still very much a fight, right? Uh, and then there is Icon versus Icon. Now this, the, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this is if anyone has played the Naruto Storm games, it very much looks like the big uh, boss fights in that. Like when you get to play as like Nine Tails or something and fight uh, the Tail Beasts in Storm 3. Like, it, or like when you get to play as Giant Choji and fight the Ghetto Statue. Very much looks like that. And I think it looks great. I know they said that every one of these is going to be different. They said they will all be, like, differently designed. Some of them will be, like, a on-rail shooter. Some of them will be, like, a wrestling match. That's what the Ifrit Garuda one is. Uh, some of these will turn the entire fight into a battlefield. I'm assuming that's going to be, like, Clive versus Odin. Or, like, you know, Clive versus Bahamut or something like that. But even still, uh, looks. Uh, I'm very interested to see how those are. Now, I want to touch on something else because Yoshi P has made a big point to talk about this. And that is, is this game open world? Thankfully, no, it is not. Now, see, I love Final Fantasy 15. I love the game to death. However, <laughs> the open world is not one of that game's strong suits. And as Yoshi P had said, they chose to go with large zones because it's very easy. It's it's much easier to depict co conflict on a global scale and a wide variety of nations uh, when you do this. Basically, if you're familiar with like. Lightning Returns again. This game is a, taking a lot of Lightning Returns, which is funny because 7 Remake did the same thing. Uh, if you're kind of familiar with Lightning Returns, I imagine it will be a very similar setup where you have your ta the town of Luxaria and Yusnan, and then you have your big zones like the Dead Dunes Desert, you have the Wildlands. Uh, I'm assuming it'll kind of be like that. I know they said there's like six uh, huge zones that are each like one or two square kilometers, so pretty pretty cool stuff there. Uh, I'm very happy this is not going open world, especially if 7 Rebirth is going to go open world. So I think I think this is a very good choice on their part to, to not make this go full open world. Because so many games do that these days, and it's exhausting. It's why, it's why I just didn't beat Elden Ring. I got like 8 hours in, I was like, alright, I'm bored. I want to go do something else. It's the same reason I quit Forbidden West. I got like 10 hours into Horizon Forbidden West. I said, alright, I'm going to go do something else now. And I did. I went and played Bloodborne a few times. So, uh, it, I just, I much prefer when it's not open world, but they've assured that this game is going to have a lot to offer, and I would say so, because they said that the length of this game, uh, the, in terms of cutscenes, it's about 10 hours, in terms of, like, the entire story, uh, combat and all, ex the necessary exploration required to get done with that, they said it's going to be 35 hours, and they said if you do all the side stuff, it doubles, so there's literally, th like, 35 hours of side activity. Bro, I'm taking the week off of work when this comes out. You will not see me. You will not know I exist. You will hear from me in daily Bloodborne Remaster updates. That is it. I will be gone, okay? I will be gone. There will be no hearing from me <laughs> at the time. Like, at that time, it's just, it looks so good. I am so excited for this game. I cannot wait. Th this did not disappoint me. There were things that I was kind of put off by, like, for example, from the Awakening trailer, it looks very much like a Devil May Cry. Uh, from the other games, from the other trailers, it looks like kind of like a Devil May Cry Dragon's Dogma hybrid. And then from the first clip of this, I thought I was looking at a Souls-like at first, man. Like, when I, uh, when I first looked at the new gameplay demo that I'll post in the description or comments, I thought I was looking at a Souls-like. <laughs> like, as... It looks really good, but uh, yeah, I, I cannot wait. I am so excited. I, I really, 
I'm just itching to get my hands on it. I'm itching. I can't wait to get my hands on 16. Demo comes out two weeks before release. Save carries over to the main game. No, I am not carrying over my save. I will play the demo, love it, and then I will restart the game. 100%. I cannot wait to get my hands on this. This game looks so good. I just need this and I need FF7 Rebirth to hurry up and show itself. E3 is 7 Rebirth time. I can tell. I can feel it. I am so excited. But yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this rambling. Let me know if you are as excited for this game as I am. If you're even a quarter of exci as excited for this game as I am. I cannot wait. Uh, let, again, let me know. I love Final Fantasy. Everything like that. I'm so excited. Cannot wait. So good. I'm rambling. Ah, no sword video will come soon. I promise. I just had to get this out. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. My name is Carmen, but I go by Ellism on YouTube, and that is going to do it. Y'all take it easy.